Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics, and welcome to Norsden Land Teniso, episode 30. So, um, you may have noticed, or rather impossible, I have a lot of materials in my inventory. That means we're going to build something. We're going to build ourselves a freighter, which can carry up to 103,680 items on it. Um, it's basically a giant... Oh cool, I needed that. It's basically a giant uh, ship that carries stuff, and we need cobblestone. So at this moment, I'm going to begin accepting cobblestone again. Because also, um, the airplanes have been exploding into use, and it's become apparent that we need large paved spots for them to take off and land. So that's why we need stone. Also for some other projects of great magnitude and size that I'm considering later. So, let's get started building our thing. Uh, and then, after the build, we're going to go ahead and test the high-speed train. And then, I'm going to take a nice flight on a new aircraft which had recently been created. Uh, this one is actually quite sizable. Uh, it can hold about 10 or 13 people and it also has two engines instead of one. Uh, and a, a lot of the stuff there on board is electrical and there's a much larger... Um, the engine isn't even diesel. I believe the engine is a type of um, low-octane gasoline. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, the ship is very big, but it's very simple, so we should be able to build it in real time. So I'm only going to pause the video to uh, bring up the schematic, and we're going to build it using the schematic. So here's the schematic off to the left in uh, good old Microsoft Paint. And we're going to go ahead and get started now, um, building the ship. And one of the great things about the ship is the way we've designed it is such that... Oh, this is a real pain. Uh, the way we've designed it is such that it will float so high in the water that we can basically take it anywhere where there's water and not obstructions. It's quite a big craft, so it's very hard to maneuver, but because the harbor tends to be quite uh, more... Oh my gosh, this is getting off to such a slow start. Because the harbor is more... Uh, what's the word? More wide than it is deep, we should be able to bring it inside. Uh, we only, we need less than, and I believe I've tested this multiple times, we need less than a meter to float the craft, which basically means if there's water there, we can go there. And for some reason, my things look messed up. Oh well, I have to continue. Unless it's from the... No, that's not the back either. That's messed up. Okay. So right now I'm building the base, and I'm building it using the gray schematic there. Uh, the next row will be six beam, and there will be th three columns of it. And the last one is eight beam, and it's going to be 29 blocks long. So that's seven beam, eight beam, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I hate this mod. This mod is good for nothing. Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and because I was interrupted by that stupid mod, now I have to check it. Okay, the count was correct, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, build it on this side now. Also move the map in a little bit so that we can see it. And now it's just about filling this up. I'm going to pause the video here because this is actually the only long stage and the rest of the ship will be able to be built in real time. Okay. So, you know, I used to like it. And that doesn't matter anyway. You know, I used to like it when this mod was inactive. Because when it was, when I ran out of materials, I would just be like, Oh goody, I have another stack in my inventory. But no, I get past another... Okay, let me see. This one is going to be... Six beam and two. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two. But no, I get past a decoy, and then I'll sometimes check my inventory and see that no, the decoy was the only thing, and that I don't actually have another stack of the material I want. That is why I hate this mod. Okay. Uh, and now there are 14 connectors that need to be added in order for this to function properly. And now I think I know what went wrong. Yes, I do know what went wrong. So here's 2x2, two two, and then I had to add 14 connectors. So that's 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, and then we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, and then simply 13 and 14 is, and I can't read that. It's on the six transverse outer block. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, 13, 14. Good. This is the first layer, so now we're going to move up one, and uh, we're going to do what the chart says. which is this for a while. I actually don't need to count here because of how organized this chart actually is. I hate this mod. I hate it so much. There we go, and now it's lined up perfectly. And so now we're going to do the same on this side. 
Good thing I caught that. I looked up and it was 9.58. And I was like, oh, time to... But no, it just went... Okay, um, this is a bit challenging. Three, four, shoot, there seems to be a miscount. I'm going to see what's going on. Okay, so I don't think it's 100% necessary that we get this right, so I'm going to go ahead and depart from um, making sure we get it absolutely right and then move on. So this completes the base and the hull, which means now we can move on to the cabin. And this is where it gets tricky, because this is where we screwed up. Okay, that's right. Let's go ahead and put the doors in now. And where'd my crafting table go? Seriously, this isn't... Oh, there it is. And this goes... Right there. Let's get rid of these things so that they don't annoy us again. Okay. Doors are placed, but I forgot to smelt some glass. That's going to be a little bit irritating. Next layer up.
Okay, so we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of glass. Well, we're going to have to go diving. The sand's gone, so while that's uh, happening, I'm going to put the roof on. And the roof looks like that. Okay, and that's the end of the cabin, um, so now all that we have to do is place the torches and the chests. Well, first we have to build the chests, actually. You can see already how big this thing is. Uh, it's actually overtaken the destroyer here. is the largest waterborne craft that we currently have. And we need 60 chests. Which means we need to see about seven and a half stacks of wood. Is that right? I'm going to go ahead and start building first because I don't want to get this wrong. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh my gosh, we ran out. That irritates me. I am irritated. And I'll have to go and come back. So I finally have 60 chests. And then we're going to place them according to the schematic here. Two, three. Aha, okay. This is where the extra, um, where the extra block was. And I'm actually kind of glad it's at the front because if you look at the schematic, there's not a access point without hopping over something. Whereas, if you look at this, what it actually is, uh, it does actually go, or rather have an access point to the front. Okay. Now all we have to do is 
Now all we have to do is just hope that uh, the uh, ship won't sink, sink because of an extra block in the way. It's actually perfect timing. Um, it's about to get dark. So there's the first one, second one. Four, five, and now this is the one that's different. Wait a minute. Six. Should have skipped. Two. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Seven. Eight. Nine. And we're done. Okay, we're going to start it up now, and please don't sink on me, because I will get so pissed off if you try and sink. Um, we should be able to get it into the harbor of New Venice, because we only need one meter of water to float. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll try and get it as far up the uh, the harbor as we can. So with just one more pause to save. And here we go. Let's hope that those extra blocks don't sink us. That's a bad sound. Um, but yes, we... Um, are taking less than one meter of draft. And this ship has a very strange maneuverability. Why is it still bright? It should not still be bright over there. What am I stuck on? Probably a lily pad or something dumb. Oh, we're moving. Okay. Where's the bridge? Yeah, it's not the best thing that we're doing this at night. Uh, I'm having trouble. Okay, I found the bridge. There it is. Oh, we're actually closer than I thought. Yeah, it kind of sucks doing this at night. There we go. Just squeezed under the bridge. Okay, so now we're in the harbor. Looks like we might have gotten hung up on something again. changed my mind. I'm going to back it out some towards the bridge uh, to get out of the main channel. And then we'll go ahead and uh, anchor it off the southern end of the harbor.
as expected, this thing is quite hard to maneuver. Uh, let's see if we can try to swing the, the ship in there. I doubt we're going to be able to re decompile, but we can, yeah, we can try. We can always try. Oh, we've decompiled. Okay, let's see where the heck we are. We need to make sure there's no lily pads touching the ship because they're going to mess things up. And those vines will have to be removed. Actually, no, those vines won't have to be removed. Okay. This is actually a good spot for it. Um, I don't believe we're blocking any ship traffic. Although it is kind of deep here. I was hoping it'd be a little bit more shallow to stay out of the... Okay, well, where's the lily pads? That's where I'm really concerned, because I don't want to block the channel. Okay, um... All right, yeah, it looks like there, there's enough there's enough room in here. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more dredging of the harbor just to free up some space, and then we'll continue. Okay, so I've created a little bit of a uh, dock here for the ship to come up, and, well, that's where it's going to be loaded mm. from. So mm. uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next thing which is the high-speed train test. Awesome. Looking forward to that. Before we do the train test, I want to check out the uh, progress of the cobblestone. We don't want to overload our machines. Uh, I plan to collect about 20,000 cobblestone so after that's been done, then we're going to shut off the uh, collection of cobblestone. Yeah, we're at 5,000 now, so we got a ways to go. Meanwhile, you might have noticed on the map that I figured out how to uh, park the airship. So what I did was I moored it high above the city. If I, there you, now you can see it way up at the top left. It's way up there, and you can see there's that hole underneath of it for docking. So now what I do is I take an airplane, run it up down one of these streets, take off, and then fly up to where the cargo bay is, run the airship up to speed, and then land into a trapeze, uh, which pulls the airplane up into the ship, Lovely, I forgot to deposit that. Which pulls the airplane up into the ship, and then we can fly the ship wherever we want. And it's already at a good altitude, so maneuvering is much easier. Okay, time for the test of the high-speed train. Okay. Here it is, and we're going to go ahead and get in. We should have plenty of redstone in the good. Okay, we're going to go ahead and issue the startup command now. Okay, we're started, and uh, we're ready to depart. So the first thing that we need to do is... Um, allow us to get electrical power and we do it by putting up this gantry called the panograph and then we can get power from the overhead wires so we're going to go ahead and uh, do that let's see if I can find the um, yeah I should have um, asked them to show me before there we go wait a minute there's a way to uh, Come on, which button is it? Uh, 
Okay, well, there's another guy in here. He can push buttons from his side over at, um, where? Yeah, somewhere over there. Okay. All right, so he's put the pantograph up, and it goes up from the rear of the train, as you can see there. It's now hitting the wires. Uh, next thing that we need to do is um, change the drive to forward, which now I've just done. And the plan is to run the train up to the full speed of 240 kilometers per hour and back down. So we're going to go ahead and release the air brakes, which is the primary way to drive. And the dynamics are off. So we're going to go ahead forward at 30%. And in three, two, one, now. We should hear the motors begin to wind up and we're moving.
Gauge 240, 240, notch off. We're now at the full speed of this train, 240 kilometers per hour. Good run. Turn our lights off. Put the direction control back into neutral. And uh, disconnect the pantograph. And this test is complete. Okay. So we are outside a very large, new, state-of-the-art airplane. And it has all sorts of stuff in it. If we go ahead and go inside, you can just hear a little bit of leftover fuel gurgling. But this thing is so big and it has electricity on it. Like, uh, for example, over here, there's uh, electric fuel um, things, there's a vertical speed indicator, there's a full speed indicator. Um, an altimeter, although that was in the other plane, and there was an airspeed indicator in the other plane. Look at this temperature uh, suction, and there's even low voltage and fuel pressure warnings, and a uh, doors open and close thing, which is uh, pretty nice. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> this is a little bit more complex than starting the uh, the other thing. There are multiple things we have to do. Uh, the first thing would be to turn the battery on so that we can actually see stuff. And there you can see now the fuel gauge has gone up. We have the full 205 gallons. We're going to turn the beacon light on to let people know we're going to start the engines. 
uh, we have to turn on the master ignition. Then we have to look at the throttles, bring up the mixture to maximum, the propeller to overdrive, and we have to select the uh, right main and left main tanks. And we should have plenty of fuel to start the engines now. Uh, it's a little bit chilly, so I'm going to put the heat on, and there we go. Now we have lighting. And also allow the radios to be on. So now we're going to go ahead and start the engine. So we're going to turn the boost pump on. And left, right, both. Start. Whoops. Huh. Ah, okay. Then we pull the, pull the start. Okay, I hear it. The propeller's running now, so we can switch the uh, generator on, and then now we're off the battery, so the battery won't run out. Do the same thing with the other ignition switch. Both. Boost pump on, and start the engine. Okay, both engines are running fine now, so we can go ahead and turn off our booster pumps. Uh, it looks like the fuel pressure hasn't quite reached nominal levels, so I'm going to go ahead and allow it to equalize before we go ahead and shut off the booster pump. Okay. Now we're good. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and turn on some other lights that they've outfitted for us. Okay. We seem to be all set then. Uh, so now to take off, we have to set flaps to, I uh, believe, one four. <laughs> that sounds familiar. This thing is so big, I needed to find a highway to take off on. So we're going to go ahead and release the brakes, and just like the other one, we increase the throttle to a little bit so that we can start moving. Oh no, I'll put this up for your delight. There we go, we're moving, and I can hear the hum of the engines. So somewhere, we're going to be on the highway. Rudder's checking out okay. I'm gonna go ahead and idle off now. Elevators are checking out, and the ailerons are also checking out. So, let's get this show on the road. Engines to full power. Now, I was told that this aircraft takes off at a speed greater than we reached when we were... Uh, okay, the nose has come up. There we go. Having some trouble steering here. Takes off at a speed almost greater than... Uh... <laughs> that was fun. Ah, we're airborne. Okay. good okay we're slowly gaining altitude um, yes we're airborne so we're gonna go ahead and release the flaps now so that we can move a little bit faster and the other thing that we need to do is Stow our stowable landing gear, which is also new. So let's go ahead and uh, stow that using the control for that. There it is. don't need full power, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce it some. And 
and the gear is up in a position that allows us to serve fuel better. So uh, one of the things that you'll notice about this aircraft is it's actually so big that it handles a completely different way than our very first aircraft. The very first aircraft was kind of a trickster as compared with this one. Uh, looks like the sun has risen this morning. It was a little bit of a trickster of an aircraft. And this one is a lot more um, slow, kind of like the behemoth ships that we started creating uh, when we did the, uh, for example, the, uh, the airship, the big airship, or for example, the, uh, let me see, there's the airship, and then there's the, the actual ship. And the, what's the last thing that I can't think of? That other machine? Oh yeah, yeah, the freighter. Yeah, this handles more like them. I don't want to stay up too long, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready to uh, set this thing down again. Again, looking for a nice flat road, preferably without people on it so that I don't run them over. And just like before, procedure. Whoops, we're not supposed to be hearing that. Just like procedure, we're going to begin lowering the power level. And as our airspeed decreases, we will begin to put down flap, flap levels. Yeah, so there are some people down there, but I mean, we'll, we'll be okay. Actually, we don't want to touch down quite yet. We should be slow enough now that we can go ahead and extend our gear for landing. Just fly through these trees here, no problem. Got quite a sharp turn to make here, and uh, well, I forgot that I had crashes on, so yeah, this is rather irritating. Okay, um, bad timing. Okay, um, <laughs> there we go. There's the cockpit view. Hang on a second. Oh, there's the highway, and easy now. We need more thrust because we're losing control on the bounce there. Brakes. Brakes. I hate tail draggers. Differential brakes. Who knew this plane could do calculus? The oil pressure's gone a little bit red, but that's okay because we've now stopped the engines and we're safely on the ground. So that was a no flaps landing, um, but who cares? That was fun. I don't think we're going to use this plane again because I don't like the way it handles. Uh, maybe in the future we'll have something that can go many hundreds of miles per hour and far, far, far up into the sky and can carry all the stuff that we need, like a train and and even a, a buggy of some sort. Just be able to go anywhere will just be fantastic. Um, be super fast and also handle well. And uh, make, make a plane of my own that I can fly. Uh, 
we're going to look into that. And uh, I think very soon we're going to come up with something that's going to blow my mind. So we're going to go ahead and shut down now. Put the lights off. And disconnect the generators. Radio off. Battery off. Good. Okay. And that is the airplane. Uh, that's not what I wanted. That's still not what I wanted. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I guess we'll have to take this one. Oh, yeah. Look at that sun. Um, so, I thank you for joining me in episode 30. We did a lot of stuff. Uh, we did almost more fun stuff than we did actual work. But who cares? Uh, next episode... I think, actually, next episode is about my airplane. So, uh... Airplanes are going to be taking a giant leap. Look for that next episode. Things will be completely different. Um, Norriston Land will have airports and a whole bunch of other stuff that will be like, what the heck? Where, where was this? And all that's coming next episode. So I thank you for joining me, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.